In this video we're going to see how to show an image using TimeLeaf in Spring Boot. Actually that's kind of a high level view of what we're going to do. We're going to continue an example that we already started where we can upload an image, save it to disk, and also save some metadata information about that disk to the database. We've already done that in a previous video. In this video we're going to do a bit of refactoring to show a confirmation page once the user has saved a specimen with an image. For this we're going to need a few things. An image. We're also going to need to make a static photos directory or images directory if you wish in our project. We'll need to use the to absolute path method of the paths very, uh, object or class if you wish in Java. And then we'll need to use timeleaf's thsrc attribute with a path in quotations. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm here in our project, and one thing that we have to remember is to be able to display an image on a page, the image has to be accessible to our project. So what I'll do is, I, I for TimeLeaf, it needs to be in a folder called static under source main resources, and then we can put anything like CSS there or anything that our pages are going to need once they're rendered. So in my project, I right click on source main resources, I choose new and then other, and let's choose folder and we'll call this one static. Traditionally, under that we'd have a folder called IMG or images. I'm going to call mine photos only because I want to make a difference between the photos that's the content of the website, so the photos that users can upload, and any kind of image or iconography that I might use on my site. So I'm going to right click on static, choose new, and let's do another folder, and let's call this one photos, and finish. Okay, now we need to do a little more refactoring. Let's take a look at our controller. And so far we've kind of been cheating because we start with the start page, something we're fairly familiar with. We upload an image and a specimen, and then we go back to the start page. So we're looking at the save specimen endpoint, which handles saving our specimen DTO and our photo. I'm going to change the return value here from start to success. And also, I'm going to move where I have that success. I'm going to move it until, uh, let's say, after we have the photo DTO set specimen DTO. Reason being, we know that if something went wrong in this first try block, it would come to this catch block, and we would already return an error. Down here, we've gotten beyond the catch block, so everything should be good. The only other thing that can go wrong is something wrong saving the image, in which case we'll, ex we'll catch an exception here, and once again throw an error. So here it's safe to throw a success. So I'll say save, and I have a hunch I'm going to want to change a couple of other things as well. First of all, let's have this return a model and view. Uh, because we want to pass an object to our, uh, to our page. So model and view, save specimen. And let's clean some things up. Actually, I don't really like having a mid method return. So let's go to the top here and let's have this say model and view. Model and view equals new model and view, just like so. Now down here, instead of return error, we'll say model and view dot set view name, and we'll pass in that error. Now I hate mid method returns, but let's go ahead and say return model and view. Reason being, there's no need to continue at this point if we weren't able to save the specimen. So now let's go down to the specimen page, and where we have return value equals success, let's turn that to model and view dot set view name. Just like so. Once again, we'll pass success into there. And I will borrow what I did up on line 51. I'll paste that down in this lower catch block. Just like so. Okay. And then finally, we'll return model and view. Now, I have a hunch we're going to want to use the specimen DTO that we saved and the photo DTO that describes the photo that we saved. So let's say model and view. Set, uh, or sorry, add, add object. And we'll say photo DTO, and then the photo DTO from above. And then say model and view dot add object. And this time we'll say specimen DTO. And once again, we'll pass in the specimen DTO from above. And why do I need to do this? I want to pass the photo information and the specimen information to our confirmation page, which is the page that we're calling success. We've not made that page yet, but we will shortly. I need to pass these two objects in because that page is going to want to know how to render uh, these, how to render essentially the image that we're passing in. So let's go back to our plant places controller 
And I'm going to just clone the start page because that seems like a good place to start. So uh, we'll go ahead and say copy. And then under templates, we'll say paste. That'll give us our top nav and everything else that we've worked on so far. We'll call this success so that it matches the uh, view name that we're passing into our model and view. And then inside of this, we are going to add an image tag. So we'll go, I'll tell you what, we don't really know a whole lot about this just yet, but we'll go ahead and give it the old college try. We'll say IMG and then THSRC is important because that tells us to use Timeleaf to parse this image. We want to quote it because it is proper XML. Start with an at symbol, then open close curly. Inside of that open close curly, we are going to put our relative path. So for this, I'm going to say slash photos. That's the slash on the question mark key on an American keyboard. Slash, and then we need some kind of photo name. I might hard code something for the short term. I might just go ahead and use this photo here, which I'll tell you what, I can grab this. I can grab this photo name from where I've received it. So just a moment and we'll do a control C. We'll come back later and we can replace this with an actual variable name, but we just want to kind of test out a proof of concept first. So uh, JPG, there we go. I uh, don't need to put that in quotes. And then we'll say alt and then we'll say photo upload confirmation, just like so. And then we can terminate this IMG element and save. Okay. We probably want to put something at the top, like uh, give a success message or a save message. So we'll say H1, saved, and save like so. Okay, I think we look pretty good. So a couple more things that we need to change. First of all, right now we've been saving this image right on root C drive and then down to photos. We need to make a few changes to make this work a little bit better. Let's start by looking at our specimen service. And remember to save the image file. We're just passing the bytes down to that image file. Instead of that, let's grab this photo D, uh, DTO. Let's pass that down as well because that can contain some directory information and some image information. Um, for that, we'll need to change our photo DAO and also the interface. So we'll need to have our photo DAO accept a photo DTO on the save photo image and save. And then we'll need to synchronize the interface that this is extending as well, or the interface this is implementing. Actually, there's an easier way. I can just go and click like so. And then on the save photo image, the method signature that I altered and the actual DAO implementation, I'm simply going to make the signature here match and save and we're good. Specimen service. Let's see. It looks, look, looks like that's redlining. What doesn't it like? Um, Photo D no, that should be in sync. Photo DTO image file. Yeah, photo DTO image file. That should be in sync. Let me go ahead and save that. There we go. Now everything, now everything looks good. Okay, let's take a look at this photo DTO. Now, a couple things that we can do is right now we're hard coding this folder, which probably isn't the best option. Uh, what we can do in save photo image is we can say, okay, let's get paths.get open paren, uh, uh, double quote, period, double quote, close paren, semicolon. This will get us our current absolute path. So this will get us the path uh, where we currently are. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, let me go ahead and control one. Uh, assign statement to new local variable, that'll work. Okay, so path, we'll call this one absolute path. Reason I'm doing this is that we know that if we look at our project, we have a series of folders here that are relative to a certain location. So we have our static folder and then our photos folder relative to source main resources. Now, where does source main resources live? Well, we don't know. It could be different on your computer versus mine, especially if we have multiple people working together here. So uh, path, absolute path, that gets us all the way to the source main resources directory. So this gets us to source main resources without knowing uh, the full path or hard coding it, if that makes more sense. So from there, we can say, okay, absolute, whoops. From there, we can say absolute path plus, and then in quotes, source main resources static photos. That will get us all the way to the photo path. So why don't we take that, why don't we take that whole chunk right there, control X, and I'm going to place that down here in folder, 
I'm going to use that to replace folder. There we go. Let's go ahead and give that a uh, an ending slash as well on photos, just like so. And now we're actually going to be saving this image, not just under C drive, but under the C drive, then the path to our project, or in other words, where Spring Boot is running, then source main resources, static photos, and then finally, the file name that we're saving. So after all of that, we should be in good shape. One thing though, is I want to go ahead and store this big long path into the photo DTO so that we can save that to the database. So let's say photo DTO dot set path. And that takes a string and we pass in this whole long string. Now in the honor of do not repeat yourself, let's go back down here to our paths dot get and simply say photo DTO dot get path like so. And we could even say dot, uh, we could even use the photo DTO dot get image file name uh, for that right argument if we wanted. But nonetheless, all we're doing is up on line 26, we're constructing this path to our photos directory, setting that into our photo DTO, and then we're simply retrieving that two lines later uh, in this paths.get method here on line 28. Finally, we take that full path, which is all the way from the C drive or from our root drive, all the way down to the photos directory, plus the name of the image that we're saving. And we write the bytes out to that directory using files.write, like so. Yeah, now, apologies, as I look at this, I realize I made a little mistake, but it's not too late to fix it. Uh, I'm not actually getting the absolute path yet. Let's change this to current path. There we go. And now on a new line, let's say current path dot to absolute path. That's the step that I missed. So just because I, I apologize for botching that explanation a bit earlier, but paths.get says this is where I currently am. And then current path dot get uh, to absolute path will return us the route all the way back to our root directory or our C directory. Essentially how to get from our root directory or C directory all the way to our current path. So now let's say uh, current path to absolute path. Let's let Eclipse do some work for us. I hold control press one and assign to new local variable. That returns another path. This one's called absolute path. Because of the naming conventions that I used earlier, everything still fits no problem. So let me go ahead and save and then restart. Our application has now started. Let's run back and go to the start endpoint and latitude. We'll give it one we already chose, no big deal there. Longitude, we'll tweak that just a little bit, maybe make it uh, 84 point, let's see, we'll go ahead and point, uh, we'll make it 84.58 description. Nice leaves. Plant name. Let's go with something like a, uh, uh, well, I was thinking a white oak. Okay, let's go with a swamp white oak. Uh, choose our image. There we go. And now for the magic, let's hit upload. No surprise here, our breakpoint hits. Now, we've seen it save the specimen before, so I'm going to go ahead and just play over that. Uh, it goes into the save method of the specimen DAO, which we've seen before. So that's saving the specimen to the database. We've seen that enough where I could hit that pretty quickly. We see it did not throw an exception, so we're in good shape so far. Now I'm going to walk over here, creating the photo DTO. We no longer need the set path here because we're actually setting the path in the DAO. I thought about maybe setting the path up here in the controller, but that really feels kind of dirty because that requires knowledge of the absolute path of the user's file system or the server's file system. Doesn't feel like a controller should need that. So before I commit and push to GitHub, I'm probably gonna take out that line 58, it's redundant. Okay, we set in our specimen DTO, we set the success message, and now let's try to save. I'm going to hit play, which will take us from our controller down to our service. Remember the service layer is where we have caching, where we have business logic, and where we aggregate together several different DAOs. So I hit play, and now we go to the save photo image, which will walk to our DAO layer. Now let's see what our current path is. I mouse over that, probably not gonna be a whole lot, just a period. Now let's see the absolute path, which is how we get from our C drive on my Windows machine to the uh, current path. And you see C, users, administrator, get, repository, plant places, plant places, and then dot one more time. Now let's go ahead and add to that the uh, source main resources static photos. And let's see what the full path is all the way down to our directory. You see it did a little funniness there just based on Windows file separators versus Unix file separators, but I'm comfortable it should be able to figure that out. We'll, we'll verify in just a moment. Get the bytes of our image. 
save, or get the path, and then save, and then let's return. We return to the service, and I'm going to go ahead and play. Now, let's take a look before we look at anything. Let's go back and look at that directory. Let's see, we'll go ahead and play that one through. Let's go back and have a look at the directory that I created earlier. You remember under source main resources, there were static and photos. If I click right now, we don't see anything. But what if I hit refresh? Ah, oh, look at that. We got a little carrot. And under the, underneath that, sure enough, we got plant places image 20170906132741. If we go back and take a look at our confirmation page, take a look at the save specimen endpoint. We have saved up here, and sure enough, there's our image. Now, one note, I did notice a few times if I didn't refresh that directory first, sometimes I couldn't find the image. So you might need to finagle with that a little bit, just make sure that it can find the correct image. Another thing that we want to do is we want to make this a bit more dynamic. So let's go back to our success screen. And you see right now what we have, which is hard coded here, we have the, the, essentially the entire path. Let's change this up a little bit. So first of all, we need to use a dollar sign curly operator, and then let's put the one part of the path we want to maintain in single quotes. Let's take away everything else, that hard coded image name, and then add a close curly for the dollar sign curly. What we're doing here is we're saying go to the photos directory, but I want you to pull out the photo that the user just uploaded. Now, how do we know what photo the user just uploaded? Well, remember in our controller that we're using this model and view and we're adding the photo DTO right back to the model and view and the specimen DTO right back to the model and view so that we can show details of what was just saved on this success or confirmation page. So we say photos and then we say plus and then simply photo DTO dot file name. So we access the property like so. Be very careful here because there are a lot of symbols and a lot of quotation marks. So you see double quote, close double quote, uh, then at symbol, open curly, dollar sign, open curly. And then you see single quote, the photos directory, close single quote, plus then photo DTO dot file name is the actual, uh, we're essentially calling get file name on that photo DTO. Let's confirm I spelled everything right. We have file name like so. We should have a getter method for that as well. So get file name. We have that like so. So essentially, Timeleaf is just going to reach down uh, to the photo DTO object we passed into this page, and it's going to invoke get file name on that object and fill in the blanks here. So with that, let's go ahead, save, stop, and confirm that everything will work as we wish. The application has restarted. I did play it instead of debug because we've already seen a lot of that debugging. So here we just want to confirm that we see a photo. 3976, we'll go with minus 74.50 description. Uh, this one is in lower Manhattan. And I paused the video and grabbed another image. This one is from an Eastern Redbud. So I'll tell you, well, I'll tell you, it doesn't matter. We'll go ahead and put in anything that can auto-complete. So we'll call this one a white oak, even though it's not a white oak. Let's go ahead and choose the file. And I'm going to use this one called Manhattan. And uh, different from the one that I used before, open and then upload. And take a look. Sure enough, we get back our confirmation page was saved. We have our lower Manhattan here, white oak. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see this image of this red bud. And there is a uh, battery park in the background. This is lower Manhattan, right around the battery tunnel, West Street, that area, if you're familiar with the area. And this is a red bud in early spring. But nonetheless, we can see that we are able to upload an image and then immediately show that image on the page by using time leaf and some variables. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.